The key thing today is to share our experience and our ideas, because if we leave it to the political parties to sort this out, frankly, they never will, because the tribal nature of British political parties is so obviously there in the House of Commons. They're there because of the system that we've been suffering from. From the voters' point of view, it doesn't work. Sadly, it does for those who get elected. So we've got to get this issue out to people in the country so that they understand how badly they've been cheated by the system. Over my political career, from the 60s onwards, I was elected a county councillor a long time ago, there's gradually been a much bigger spread of political parties and therefore much more choice for the voter. But what we've ended up with is a system which does not reflect that. The two-party system, which is alive and well in the House of Commons, means that the government over the years has got less and less proportion of those who are eligible to vote. Less than a quarter sent Mr Cameron into number 10 last year. Less than a quarter of those who could have voted. Now, if that had happened in any other part of the world, the Conservatives would be the first people to say that was illegitimate. I think they've got to start discounting their party support, and they've got to think very carefully about what they want to achieve with their vote. If they're prepared to put up with this very silly system, which doesn't work for them anymore, well, so be it. But if they think we've got to have a change, they should be looking at the candidates and looking at which candidate is most likely to win who could achieve that change. It means tactical voting on a much bigger scale than we've had recently. After we've had that change, of course, tactical voting is no longer necessary because you can vote precisely in a preferential system for what you want. But while we still have the first-past-the-post system, it's folly to enable somebody who is still in favour of that system to be elected on a minority vote. I think they looked, should look very carefully indeed at the results of the local elections this coming May. If, as I suspect, they're just as disproportionate, just as unfair, just as distorting of the voters' wishes, then I think they should be urging people in England and Wales to stand up for what they have achieved in Scotland, where the voter has far more influence over local elections, and as a result, Almost all the one-party states have gone. There's much less corruption, there's much less patronage, because there's proper opposition. And it's effective representation that's done this with the single transferable vote. Scotland thinks it's good, it works. The parties may not like it so much, but the people do. And I think people in England and Wales should realise that as well. Over the last 50 years, when I've been involved in these things, the change has been remorseless. We are getting to a situation where people are not in any way so loyal to parties as they used to be. They're, they're shopping around much more. That's a good thing, because they're thinking about it. It isn't so automatic. Now, in those circumstances, the trend is quite clear. If we went on as we are at the moment, the next government could come in with even less support from the nation at large and an even more disproportionate result in the House of Commons. We can't wait that long. People, I think, have got to be encouraged to stand up for their own rights, their own human rights. And one basic human rights in a representative democracy is that your vote should count.